This is a story about how buying one truck off of GovPlanet turned into owning two of these trucks. This story begins on July 14th, 2021, when I bought an LMTV off of GovPlanet for $3,000. GovPlanet is a website run by the auction house Ritchie Brothers where they sell off surplus government equipment, everything from tools to vehicles. When you are looking at an auction item, especially a vehicle, they will have an inspection report done for you. However, it seems that a lot of military bases do not take much time to either charge up the batteries to test the vehicle or do much of anything. If the vehicle doesn't start or anything doesn't work, they just mark it as not working. This means there is huge potential for you to get a vehicle where all you have to do is charge up the batteries or put new batteries in it and it will work fine. There was several LMTVs going up for sale on the day that my truck was being sold. This was not my first choice of trucks, but the one that I was going to bid on first, I ended up missing the auction and couldn't bid on it. This truck had the bidding starting at only $3,000, so I decided I'll put in a bid. If nobody else bids, then I'll take this truck. I was not being too picky about which truck I got. I just wanted to have one of these to be able to play around with and see what it's all about, to be able to compare it to my two and a half ton M35A2. The experience of buying the truck was going well so far, but this is where things took a downturn. I put in a bid for $3,000 pretty early in the auction. I think the auctions for these trucks only last about 10 minutes, and if another bid is put in near the end time of the auction, it extends the time giving the previous bidder a chance to rebid. After the auction ended, the bid count went to two, which was really strange because I won the truck and I was the only bidder. Amount for the truck did not increase from $3,000 at any point. The next problem I encountered is that on all of these vehicle auctions, there is a Veritred estimate on what you might pay to ship the vehicle. I assumed that this was an estimate from Veritred. I mean, all of the information about the truck is there, whether it runs, they know how big it is, they know what it weighs. It even says that if I wanted expedited shipping for this vehicle, it will cost me just over $4,000. But when I went to Veritred and tried to arrange shipping of the truck that I had just purchased, they were telling me it was going to be $5,000 to ship the vehicle. I asked them, how can that be when right on the website it says from Veritred that the shipping will only be $3,000? They said that is an estimate on the open market and not an estimate for having Veritred ship your vehicle. The person on the phone then asked me if my end use certificate had been approved. I said that I had submitted it, but it had not been approved. They then told me that it takes about six months for you to get approval to go and pick up the truck and that I should just call back then after my EUC has been approved. This was in July and after learning that I may not see the truck that I bought until we already have snow on the ground in December, I turned to Facebook Marketplace and I found another truck. I drove to Wisconsin and went to look at the truck. Although it had to be jump started and we took a few hours to change the light switch so that the headlights would work, I ended up purchasing the truck. I only made it about 10 minutes down the road until everything on the truck flashed and it was dead on the side of the road. Once I got it home, I had found out that all of the electrics had been too much for the alternator and it had blown every single light bulb on the truck. Since the engine is completely mechanical, I was able to hotwire it and get the engine to fire. However, as you can see here, there is nothing lit up on the display to the left. The transmission ECU and keypad had also been fried. Once those were replaced, I replaced the alternator as well to hopefully solve the power issues. I was still having some issues with the truck, but at this point I was now driving it around and using it for events. By this time it was now October 27 and my EUC had been approved and the truck that I had bought off of GovPlanet was now showing up.
Finally have both trucks here. Raining like crazy now, so I'm not able to get the second one to where I exactly want it. Have to wait for a better day to do that. But at least I got them both here, both off of the truck. The batteries on the new truck are dead, so I'm gonna to try to jump start it, see if it'll start. That's a good sign. It's good that this is displaying neutral here. I'm gonna turn that siren off so I can talk. It's a good thing that we showed neutral here. Looks like this might work. I also have to wait for the voltage to come up a bit more. I do have to turn this on to check it. Once the batteries are charged up, see if it'll start. I did get the truck pulled inside. I pulled it in with my international travel all. Now that I have the truck where I want it, I need to uncage the brakes, which is releasing the parking brakes so that it will not move. So if the engine is started and it's accidentally put in gear, the truck won't start running over everything. To uncage the brakes, I just need to unscrew this nut. And These trucks do have a nice place to store it right here after you have removed it. So if you need to cage the brakes on your truck, look right here and see if you have your tools in place still. Just to save you a little time, this is a 19 millimeter wrench that is needed to do this operation. Had a battery charger on it a couple days. So it's at 28.2 volts now. Let's see if it cranks now. I put a little duct tape over the buzzer because it is so loud. So we'll turn it on, hit the starter. <laughs> Cranks over real nice now. Still not starting though. I've tried to tilt the cab on the truck, but when I tried pumping it up, hydraulic fluid just uh, dripped there on the floor. There is a manual jack right here that you can use to try to lift your cab up, but that's not working at the moment. So let's get the other truck fired up I'll tilt the cab on it and then I'll know where everything is and maybe I can reach what I need to without tilting the cab on the new truck. With the cab tilted on this truck, we can see there's our priming button right there. That will prime the fuel system. And I want to try that on this other truck, see if that will help it start. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to reach that without tilting the cab first. Okay, behind this flap, if we look way up there, we can barely see that button. We'll see if I can reach up there and push that a few times. I was able to reach up there and hit it. The button did get harder and I could hear fluid moving. So hopefully this will do it. You see the oil pressure is coming up. So if your truck has a problem like this, there is a hydraulically operated latch right here that keeps the cab from tilting forward when you don't want it to. If you screw the cap on the passenger side out, Beneath that will be a spring. This is what's left of the O-ring. That's why it was leaking and not working. So now I should be able to tilt the cab out of the way. To try to get air into the system, gonna hook up the shop air to the truck, pump up these tanks. Well, I got the cab tilted, but you can see it's leaking again. Another leak. The leak is coming from the reservoir there. Fuel comes up from the tank, comes through the filter and lift pump, comes up here. And we do have fuel shut off solenoid right here. And that should have turned on with the truck, but it's not. So I'm gonna take a wire straight from the 24 volt source and put it on that solenoid and see if it runs. I have this wire clipped on there. That is the 24 volts. Just touch this to that solenoid. 
there you can hear that solenoid clicking. So if I leave that on, that should turn on the fuel to the engine. Started it up now, but it's not quite running right yet. Now that I know that I can start it by bypassing the fuel solenoid, I need to check all of my solenoids and relays to see if any are bad. I have a schematic right here that tells me if they're 12 volt or 24 volt. And I have this really handy relay tester so that I can easily and quickly test them. Okay, I filled in all the missing relays and then I found something. I was making my way across, got to this relay right here. This is the start inhibit relay. You can see this relay is only a four pin, but it's supposed to have a five pin relay. So let's take a five pin in there and hopefully that does it. There we go. Let's see if it starts. Nice. Even though this truck is running now, I still can't drive this on the road because I can't go and register it. I still have to wait for Gov Planet to send me the government documents to take to the courthouse and get this truck titled and registered. It's now November 23rd and my certificate from the government has arrived so now I can take this into the courthouse and get a title for my truck. Here you can see the difference between my Austrian built Pinsgauer and an LMTV. Let's take the LMTV for a drive. These trucks are very nice and easy to drive and they're actually pretty quick. You start out in second gear, first gear is a very low gear used just for off-road. And once we get going here, when it switches into third gear, it actually accelerates very quickly. And it will go through all the rest of the gears until it gets up to seventh gear. Right now we're already doing 50 miles an hour. The brakes on this truck work just as good as it accelerates. Let's try out a few roundabouts. For a truck the size of this one, it's actually very maneuverable. And with power steering and an automatic transmission, really anybody could drive this truck. You can change from the street to off-road mode on the fly by hitting the mode button. On the left, the seven changed to a five. And that means that we only have five forward gears now, but the truck is now into the off-road mode. The other thing we can do is hit the buttons on our central tire inflation system which will automatically deflate or inflate our tires depending on what mode we want. We have highway, cross country, mud, emergency, and run flat. We can hit these buttons at any time to switch between the modes and our tires will automatically deflate or inflate based on the mode that we have selected. Let's leave it in cross country mode until we get back on the street. These trucks are no slouch. If you want to go fast off-road, again, once you hit that second to third gear shift, the truck gets very fast. And it can cruise quite quickly off-road.
In the end, the truck that I got from Gov Planet did work out. It did not take a whole lot of work to get it running and working. In this case, I had a lot more problems with the truck that I bought on the open market. But if I was to do this all over, I would buy a truck off the private market. You know what you're getting. You know what it's going to cost you. And you don't have to wait months to have any communication about what is going on with your vehicle.